Hi, this is Nanette Hosenfeld with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, August 11th, 2018. Looking at the fire potential impacts over the next few days, things will be uh, quite busy, quite interesting. Uh, for today, we're looking at the potential for some gusty winds and low relative humidity across the western part of the Great Basin. You can see those areas highlighted in orange. Um, also of concern today is the potential for some wet and dry thunderstorms across portions of Utah. As we move into Sunday, that wet wind threat continues, but it shifts eastward in Idaho. Uh, we'll also see the coverage of the showers and thunderstorms expand on Sunday further northward. By the time we move into Monday, the winds will have decreased, uh, but we are still looking at the potential for some isolated dry thunderstorms on the edge of that moisture that we're seeing across the Great Basin, and there will be gusty and erratic winds in the vicinity of thunderstorms. Over the past 24 hours, there was some precipitation across the Great Basin, mainly across the southern part of the area. You can see lightning was associated with that as well, uh, mainly across portions of the Arizona Strip, southern Utah, and parts of southern Nevada. Uh, fire activity is uh, quite robust across the Great Basin uh, with four team fires. Looking at precipitation over the past seven days, it's been quite dry, uh, really not much in the way of precipitation at all across the Great Basin. Looking back further at the 30-day period, you can see that the majority of the precipitation has been across the southern part of the area, but it's been very, very dry across the northern and central parts of the Great Basin over the, the past 30 days. Uh, with these very dry conditions in place, ERCs are very high. You can see uh, a large portion of stations with their ERCs above the 97th percentile. And even across portions of southeastern Utah, um, ERCs are on the rise again with the drier weather that we've seen. Continuing to look at ERCs, you can see that they are approaching record values um, in portions of western Wyoming. Uh, further south across the Great Basin, they are above normal. And looking at life fuel moisture, uh, life fuel moisture is at or below normal in most areas. The exception to this is at Cane Gulch site in southeastern Utah where uh, the sagebrush moisture responded to the moisture in the area. Satellite today shows high uh, pressure in place across the Great Basin and that is responsible for the uh, hot and dry weather that we've seen along with some of the moisture further south. So looking at impacts for today, you can see the potential for uh, gusty winds highlighted across the western part of the Great Basin and our areas of concern as far as lightning. Looking at today in a little more detail, the image on the left um, shows where those showers and thunderstorms are expected. Uh, the areas highlighted in green are the portions of the Great Basin expected to see showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Um, outside of those areas with the thunderstorms, we are looking at pretty dry relative humidities. And just taking a look at the winds, um, again you can see those gusty winds expected across portions of western Nevada in the uh, 30 to 40 mile an hour range. As we move into Sunday, we keep moisture in place across the southern part of the Great Basin. We will see the threat for thunderstorms expand and you can see a larger area uh, highlighted on the um, seven day product on the right as far as those dry thunderstorms. And also the wind threat will continue across the north. Looking in further detail at Sunday, you can see the image on Looking in more detail at the weather forecast for Sunday, the image on the left shows where those showers and thunderstorms are expected to develop, um, and the image on the right shows relative humidity uh, minimum forecast for Sunday afternoon, and you can see really dry relative humidities across portions of western, northwestern Nevada tomorrow. And on Sunday, uh, the wind th threat shifts further east into Idaho. As we move into Monday, we keep that moisture in place across the area. Uh, you can see we're continuing to highlight the risk for lightning across portions of northern Utah, Nevada, and into Idaho. And taking a little uh, more detailed look at that, again, you can see the area expected to see those showers and thunderstorms um, across the area on Monday on the image on the left. The relative humidity forecast on the right shows those relative humidities uh, continuing to trend upwards over the next few days, but still quite dry across parts of Nevada and Idaho. And by Monday afternoon, the winds will be quite light across the area. Over the next three days, precipitation accumulation is expected to be confined mainly to uh, the southern part of the Great Basin. As we move into Tuesday, that moisture continues to remain in place across the area. We are highlighting southeastern Idaho for the threat of uh, thunderstorms on Tuesday. Then as we move into Wednesday, pretty similar pattern, um, moisture in place across the Great Basin, but relative humidities should be coming up. So while we are expected, expecting to continue to see thunderstorms into Wednesday, um, at this point they'll probably trending, be trending a bit wetter. 
We move into Thursday, a pretty similar pattern in place with that moisture across the area. And finally on Friday, models are hinting that some drier air might move back into the Great Basin. Uh, the seven day precipitation total uh, accumulation shows things focusing on about the eastern two thirds of the Great Basin as far as our precipitation goes. Finally, the 8 to 14 day outlook, the Climate Prediction Center is calling for above normal temperatures across the entire area uh, with the potential for some above normal precipitation further south. So that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our information is on the screen and you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks.